are things that I think it's important for us uh, here. I spoke about fatherhood yesterday. And I want you to get that, uh, that CD, DVD, whatever you want. Uh, that is very important, that you understand where we build from. Because we don't build from organizations, we build from fatherhood. You cannot build the kingdom of God without fatherhood. It is impossible. You know, I've been preaching to some, I can't even remember how many churches I've preached in my life. And you can see clearly the churches that build from fatherhood and those that build from organization. And there is a big difference. Now, I'm not saying that your organization is wrong or the denomination is wrong. That's not what I'm saying. In the denomination or in the structure, you can still build fatherhood in. You can still build the sonship in. Uh, it's just, if, it's not, if that model is not there, you're going to struggle. You're really going to struggle. And uh, we want to help you establish these things. It becomes a culture for us. We didn't have uh, this fatherhood culture about, up till about four years ago. We always preached about it. We always believed about it. We always said we sons and fathers and all these things, but we never had a revelation about it. When you have a revelation, your church starts changing. Uh, you know, culture starts changing. People start calling you dad and mom. And for, like I said yesterday, it was very weird for me in the beginning. But then I started accepting that's what they want. Because the planet is full of orphans. And then we started implementing the Equip series, which Pastor Christo spoke about yesterday. I cannot see a church function without the vision in process. Not because it's from us, but I'm telling you now, uh, you, uh, here's the thing. Otherwise, you just have church. Who have you? It's not how many people come to your church. And that's what Nikki said here as well. Uh, yes, we see the stats. But if a thousand people come to church on Sunday, the question is this. How many of the thousand people are disciples? That's the question. How many of them are really involved? How many of them are growing? We are not goal oriented. We are growth oriented. And so... I want to have, if I come to church here on a Sunday and I see a thousand people in the church, I want to know that a thousand people are disciples. They speak like me. They think like me. They do the word of God. They are involved somewhere. They are training and equipping. They are growing and not just coming to church. And, and that is what the function is of this ministry. We have, we have a vision, and the vision is simply evangelism or evangelize, affirm, disciple, saint. That's our vision. We evangelize, we affirm the people, we disciple people, and we send them. Some we send out, some we send back in the church, and they go and make disciples again. They evangelize, they affirm, disciple, send. This process works. We call it the vision in process. This process works. Every Tuesday night when you come to this church, you will see probably 200, 250 people being activated to move in the supernatural. Every Tuesday night. I don't know how many, how many new members did we have on Tuesday? Level 1. 35 new families on Tuesday night. Per week. We don't have new membership every second month, third month. Every Tuesday night there's a new membership taking place right here. Every Thursday. And I think Pastor Christo spoke to you how our process works. If you get saved on a Sunday, Tuesday night you are in level one. You get filled with the Holy Ghost, introduced to the vision of the church. We start with your discipleship training. Saturday you're getting baptized in water. Next Sunday. So in seven days everything is done. And then they start with the level two, which is the school of discipleship. And we start the process with them. Nobody's excluded. Everybody's involved. Everybody works together towards one vision, which is to evangelize, to affirm, disciple, and sing. That's our vision. There's no other vision in the church. It's one vision. The children's ministry doesn't have a vision. Uh, the youth doesn't have a vision. The band doesn't have a vision. They may have goals, but they don't have a vision. The vision is evangelism, affirmation, discipleship, sending out. So everything we do is focused on that. Our television program is focused on that. Our radio programs focus on that. Social media focus on that. Everything we do is focused on that. Everything. Hello. And then we have a mission which is uh, to activate this, this generation in the supernatural power of God. I think you've probably heard 
the, the, the panel, the sons and daughters that were on the stage, they would probably have said, I'm here to activate this generation in the supernatural power of God. Because that's our mission. It's not other mission. I can go and call you one of our first impressions, which is the ground staff. Uh, I can go and call any one of them right now that's working on the property, and I'll ask them, what is the vision of the church? They'll say, to evangelize, affirm, disciple, send. And then I'll ask them, what is the mission of the church? They will tell me, to activate the supernatural power of God. Then if you ask them, how do you do that? They will tell you this, I clean the toilets. I wash the the, 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 uh, chairs. I bring the water. Hello? So how we do it. The how is not the mission. The the mission is to activate this general. How do you do that? I answer the phones. I'm the secretary. I'm the PA. I type the letters. That's how I activate this generation, the supernatural power of God. And And that is the culture of the church. Everybody does the same thing. We're all working towards one goal and one plan and one vision and one heart. And by doing this, we raise up disciples in the presence of God. And uh, I, I brought this book here with you so, uh, to, so that you can see. We're doing level one. We do level two. We do level three, which is inner healing and deliverance. And everybody in the church goes through that. If you want to be involved in the church, you have to go through level three. And then we do level four, which is the school of mentors or leadership. That is where we train them now to take cells and, and all those things. And then level five is, is the next one. Then school of mentors. And then we start, and I've started this now. It take, took me about three years to get the whole process in place. We've just started with this manual. This is apostolic discipleship. This is where I sit with my spiritual sons and my Ephesians in the house. And I go this, through this manual, three years, two years, 12 months, doesn't matter. We go through this systematically. Once a month, we sit together about the manual. The rest of the month is discipleship. I can sit one-on-one with them, group, have coffee, bry, and impart into them. It becomes a lifestyle. It's my disciples, this. It's, 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 it's my people that I walk with, that I live with. Jesus, the model of Jesus is discipleship. He did more with 12 than what we do with 12,000 people. And because he did it right on the basis of discipleship. So I don't want my sons to have another DNA of anything else. They do what we're doing here. And you know what? Um, on Sunday, for, just for instance, I, I'll be preaching with, at Pastor John Torrance's church. Pastor Christo is preaching here Sunday morning. Pastor Tish preaches Sunday night here. It's my sons. I don't worry this little bit. If they're going to split the church, speak their own doctrines. As a matter of fact, um, I gave my notes to Pastor Christo, what he preached on Sunday morning. Because that's what dads do. We give it out. and You preach this, carry on here. Because you'll carry the same DNA. If they tell me, Dad, he sounds just like you. That's the greatest compliment you can have. And so that is what we are doing. And, and I'm just giving you an overview of what we do. So a, per, a person that comes into my circle must become a disciple. That's what I'm trying to give to you. What is a covering? We can cover you. And we can pray for you and all those things. But in that covering, you must make a decision how far you want to go. You know, are we going to meet one another once a year? And that's fine. That's wonderful. And that's great. We do the work of a kingdom together. But then there are other people that says, I want to draw close. Disciple me. Become a father to me. A disciple for me is a son. Let's use another word. And, and, and we train them and we become one with one another. And we start walking the road together and we start increasing the kingdom of the living God. Imagine we can have a, 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 a nation full of people that speak the same language and operate the same thing and think the same on the supernatural power of God. And that's what we want. When Pastor John said last night, he says, the charismatic movement is done. It hit me like this. We had the faith movement. Done. Prosperity movement. They all win. The charismatic movement is done. There's a new movement called, I think, the kingdom movement or the supernatural movement. And that's where the saints are going to work together. And that's why we have to get our structures right. To turn every believer in our churches into disciples. And, And that's what we want. And that's how we 
operate in this ministry and do this. For instance, I sat with my spiritual sons yesterday and I taught them 30 principles on how to preach. While you had the talk, remember I came and I said, I just had a meeting with my sons. I gave them 30 principles. This is how you preach. This is how you do it. This is how your message must look like. Not, not look like, but let me give you a couple of things. It must be positive. Stick to your time limit. <laughs> Show me your notes. I, I, you know, help people. Don't impress people. You know, all these little things. These are values we want to install into your life. I really want, I'm really here to help you. We are not here to start another church and another organization. Oh my goodness, how many organizations do we have? And networks we have and fellowships we have and fraternals we have. I can't handle another one. Amen? But what I said this morning to Pastor Tish, I said to him this, I said, you know what, son? The moment you find your identity and you get your purpose, all those other things fall away. I, let me tell you, I don't go to conferences after conference after conference. I used to do that. Every month in a different conference. When I found my identity, I stick to that. I go to my Hemi. That's it. Twice, three times a year. It's my identity. It's my purpose. I don't have to travel anywhere. I found my identity. If you find who you are, you don't have to go to this conference to take there and take that and take that and take that and you have a whole mixture. Mixtures are a problem. So we have to stick to our identity and make that strong. Amen. So I just wanted to share that on how I or how we want to train and establish people. Here's another thing that I'm training that I still need to sit with them. How to kill an atmosphere. How to kill an atmosphere. I'll show you how to kill an atmosphere. These are, I think, important things. Important things. Four, I wrote it down here. Four keys to kill an atmosphere. <laughs> what is the vision? How must your culture look like in church? These are, for me, things, and I want you to understand, that's my heart. I am not always about, let's pray the five hours and get the supernatural. Day. It's about growing your church. It's about knowing what is an atmosphere killer. It's about knowing how to structure this thing. It's about knowing how to read a, 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 a meeting. It's about knowing how to unlock heaven to come to earth. Those things are for me a, a very, it's, it's very close to my heart. And that's what I want to train our network. Not our network, it's wrong. Our fellowship of pastors that comes again and say, Let, let's, let's do this right. Let's do this thing right. Let's become supernatural churches. So if you don't want to be a supernatural church or you don't feel that is your DNA, then just be in association so that when we hit your city, you come and you're a part of that. And, and, and we are wonderful brothers and, and, and sisters in the Lord and you come here when we have the movement and stuff. But there will be those, the circles. Jesus had the 120 and the 70 and the 12 and the 3 and the 1. The circles of life. You choose which circle you want to be. And, and, and you need to press in towards that. And I promise you today, you will have a church that will start operating in a different dimension than the same old, same old. Amen. So I want to speak to you just from, from one portion of Scripture, and then we're going to let you go and have your KFC or Nando's or whatever you want, Bregos. Mark chapter 2. Just put it up for me, please. Verse number 21 and 22. How many of you would like to have this material available? Amen. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Mark chapter 2, verse 21 to 22. Yeah, if you give me 10,000, I'll, I'll give it to you. No one uh, sues a piece of unshrunk cloth and an old garment or else a new piece will pull away from the old. And tear is made worse. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine bursts its the wineskins, and the wine is spilled, and wineskins are ruined, but the new wine must be put into new wineskins. God is doing something new. That is what we have to know. God is doing something new, and if we're going to stay behind, 
We're going to be the old wine skins when the new wine is poured out and the new wine is being poured out and we are in an old structure. This thing is going to burst. There's nothing wrong with the old. Please understand. It's good. We learn a lot from that. But there is now new wine coming that needs to be poured into this. And I'm going to have to change. I have to change my way of thinking, my way of speaking, my way of preaching, the way I think, the way I manage this thing is new wine coming in. And so the question is, are we still the old wine or are we going to be the new wine skins? And so, you know, the quality of this new wine, it expands. It keeps on expanding, keeps on expanding. People are looking for new things. God is a new God. Uh, if I, yeah, let me, yeah, he is a new God because he's new every day. The angels stand around the throne room of God and they say, holy, holy, they are. He's new the whole time for them. And so God is doing a new thing, a brand new thing. And if we don't listen to what he's doing, we're going to miss the cloud. We're going to miss the move of God. And I'm not saying this is the final move of God. This is just another move. And our challenge is that we need to be progressive. If we are, the challenge for the supernatural is, is simply this. The, 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 the losing of the fear of God and the seeker sensitive move. That will be opposition. So we have to keep on pursuing and keep on pressing and keep on maintaining the, the momentum we have. Why does a John Wesley start with signs, wonders, and miracles? And today we have the Methodist Church, with all due respect, that's ordaining gay ministers. What is happening? They never moved with the cloud. They never started going forward to what God is doing. Now, we have to, and the same with John G. Lake. John G. Lake was five kilometers away from this church, standing here in Boxburg. If you go and have lunch, you can go and see where he, where he was. Standing and prophesying on the Boxburg um, train station platform, he says that the greatest move in South Africa is going to take place here. Five kilometers away from here. Where is this church today? Seeker sensitive? Hmm? Accepting in hyper grace? I'm telling you, we need to say, God, send new wine. Yes, we have the buildings, we have the structure, we have all those things. And we're not saying say goodbye to them. But in your structure, put the new wine in. Let the new wine flow. Let the glory of God start manifesting in your denomination, in your organization. Because this is not about another name and another person. It's about the new wine coming to our nation, in our churches. I am hungry that God will send new wine in the Catholic Church. And in the AFM and in the BBC and in the full gospel and the assemblies of God and the Methodists. Come on, let's just have a new wine of the Holy Ghost coming back into this, into this beautiful nation of us. But we need to learn how to accommodate the new wine that God is sending to us. And that is our heart. Our heart is, number one, to, for you to have an apostolic covering. I said it yesterday with the highlighter, remember? You need to have a cup or a covering. Otherwise, you'll become dry. You need to have a father. You need to build relationship. You need to start focusing on what you want for your life. You become like the anointing you sit under. You are a product of the anointing you submit under. So you submit under religion and all these things. That's how it's going to be. So why are we reaching the world? Because of the anointing we submit under. Why are we impacting the world? Because the anointing. Why can we do evangelism? Because of the anointing that we submit under. And so I would just wanted to speak to you very shortly and briefly about this. Is that what is an apostolic covering? An apostolic covering is simply this. Is that you come and you submit under that fatherhood. Remember this. I cannot be a father if I don't submit. I cannot father my spiritual sons if I am not a good son. I am first a son before I'm a father. I learn how to serve. I know how to serve. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I travel a lot. But when I travel, for instance, with Apostle Maldonado, travel with him um, probably to most of his countries this year. When I will go there, I am not apostle. I am not a doctor. I am not a pastor. I am whatever they want me to be. 
I sleep with the team in their hotels, drive in public buses or taxis in India, scooters and stuff. That's how we travel. And we go and we serve. I don't even see my apostle. I was just with him in, um, what's the place, Malaysia. I, I probably spoke two words with him. But I didn't go to spend time with him. I don't go to, hey, here I am. I went to serve. There's 60,000 people. We need to serve. We need to raise people from wheelchairs and open the eyes of the blinds and get the crippled swag. There's no time for coffee and tea. Serving. I'm paying my own way to Malaysia. I paid my own hotel. I paid my own food. I served him from the morning till the evening, him and the team. We were 20, 25 or 30 team members. I took Nikki with me. We were there serving him. Without having a cup of coffee. But that's not, that's not the point. I didn't see him. He didn't greet me. That's not what... They've got the wrong motives. Sons are there to serve. Sons are there to build the kingdom of God. Sons are there to establish it. When we went to Ethiopia, uh, Pastor Tertius Wentworth, Pastor Andrew Wentworth, Nikki Wentworth. I mean, there's 1.2 million people standing in the dust, praying for people. Living in, 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 uh, in or dri driving six hours in a little car, getting there, buses, all these things. But you know, it's a joy to serve the kingdom of God. And this movement of the supernatural that we are doing in South Africa is part of a greater move. We're just doing it here in South Africa. That's all we're doing. But it's part of a greater move that's, that's, that's running across the world. And we have the honor and the privilege to host it in our nation here. And I believe more than ever before that God wants to raise up a church that is not seeker sensitive. And I'm sorry to say that. But it's not seeker sensitive. It's not shutting out the Holy Ghost there by the door. It's allowing the Holy Ghost to come back and to function in the power of God. And here is what I taught you yesterday. is to accommodate the supernatural in the local church. And this whole structure that we've been doing for five, six years is proven. It's track record. You can even go to Miami and go and see how it works there. It is powerful. And I want to encourage you to become part of this movement. We don't ask money. I don't ask 1% of your income. I don't ask 10% of your income. All I ask is this. Let's pray together. That's it. We pray together. We stand together. We believe together. When we do an outreach, we do it together. That's all we want. Amen. So when we do, let's say we hit Cape Town. Somebody shout Cape Town. Yeah, this one. They said Cape Town is going to have a move of the Holy Ghost. Then we all go to Cape Town. And we're all part of Cape Town. And we all build the kingdom. And we all work together and get the sick healed and cast out the demons and, and build the local church in Cape Town. And, and when we hit Durban, we do the same. And we do Port Elizabeth. There is no, I don't expect anything from you. The only thing I expect is let's pray for a move of the Holy Ghost in this nation and allow us to help you to build your local church to accommodate this in the, in the presence of God, in the glory of God. And for those of you that obviously will grow closer we will work that thing out in the sense of how many times we will see one another how are we going to do this but the, i don't want anything the question is how can we help you that's the question and that's all i had to say to that